Hi everyone. Through this class, we are going to study about the different parts of ESR spectrometer. The ESR spectroscopy is usually carried out in microwave region. The basic requirement for observing ESR transition is the resonance condition H nu equal to G mu V B. And we can attain this resonance condition by continuously varying the incident frequency nu and keeping the external magnetic field B constant. Second method is varying the external magnetic field B and keeping nu constant. The second method is easy because we can vary the external magnetic field easily. So it is preferred over the first one. In an electromagnetic radiation, electric and magnetic fields and the direction of propagation are mutually perpendicular. In ESR experiment, the oscillating magnetic component of the radiation interacts with the magnetic dipole associated with unpaired electrons. In ESR spectroscopy, successful absorption is possible only when Oscillating magnetic field is perpendicular to the applied magnetic field. If the oscillating magnetic field is parallel to the applied magnetic field, there will be only oscillation of energy level. And there will be no reorientation of electron magnetic moment. For getting transition between energy levels, there should be reorientation. So, the oscillating magnetic field should be perpendicular to the applied magnetic field. Now, let us consider the different components of X-band ESR spectrometer. The first important component is an electromagnet. And that electromagnet should produce homogeneous magnetic field. Second one is a source of microwave. Usually, we use clistron oscillator as the source. Clistron oscillator will produce monochromatic radiation of required frequency. Then third component is a sample cavity or resonant cavity. The sample cavity is used to keep our sample. And the sample cavity is placed between pole pieces of the first electromagnet. The fourth component is the arrangements for guiding the radiation emitted by the source into sample cavity. Then fifth one is a detector. We can use semiconducting crystals as a detector in this case. And after detection, we want to amplify the weak signals using an amplifier. Then this amplified signal, it is sent to this recorder. Phase sensitive recorders are normally used in this ESR spectrometer. The block diagram of simple balanced bridge spectrometer is shown in the figure. Here we can see our source clistron, then the electromagnet with the pole pieces N and S, then a microwave bridge, then a preamplifier, then phase sensitive detector then modulator and a recorder. The monochromatic radiation from clistron is transmitted into sample cavity through an impedance bridge with four arms 1, 2, 3 and 4 as shown in figure. The rectangular sample cavity which contains the sample is kept in between pole pieces of the electromagnet. A dummy load is kept in the third arm and a semiconducting crystal detector in the fourth arm of the impedance bridge. The radiations that arrive at the fourth arm are detected by the crystal. It is then amplified and fed to the recorder via phase sensitive detector. Phase sensitive detector is used to detect ESR signal and represented as absorption or first derivative curves. The magnetic field is swept over a small range across the resonance condition 
by varying the current in a pair of sweep coils mounted on the cavity walls. The ESR signal with a single absorption line is shown in this figure. And its first derivative will be like this. If there are four equally spaced overlapping absorption lines, it will be like this. And if we take the first derivative, it will be as shown in figure D. When the bridge is in balanced position, microwave power flows only in arm 2 and arm 3. There will not be any power in this arm 4. When the bridge is not balanced, power flows into this arm 4. Thus, if balance exists, no power signal appears at the detector. When the signal absorbs the microwave radiation, here the balancing of the bridge is lost and the power appears in the fourth arm. The width of the ESR lines are fairly large and hence the spectrum is usually recorded in the first derivative mode. There are two main advantages of first derivative mode. First one, it can estimate the intensity more precisely. Second one, it gives well-defined line width delta B. Even if there are overlapping of signals, it is still possible to do a good estimate of line width in this first derivative mode. 